I'm a computer scientist turned designer, and I'm interested in how maps and geovisualization can help regular people to better understand their environment. And nowadays, we live in a very data-rich world, and it only increases. So we are seeing more and more sensors and services and systems, and they're all recording and generating large amounts of data, and many of which are about movements in a city. So let me give you a personal example. Yesterday, coming from Paris with the uh, Eurostar, I arrived at St. Pancras and bought a coffee with my credit card. Then I took a cab going to the hotel, and that apparently was not a good idea because at 5 p.m. getting close to St. Paul's Cathedral is really something you should not do. Anyway, after a good night's sleep, this morning then I learned it, and I went to the tube station, tapping in with my Oyster card. So I went then here to Barbican Station, and when last meet us to the museum, I tweeted how I'm thrilled to be here on the stage today. So all the while, I was leaving some kind of invisible trail behind me. All the while, I was leaving some little digital bits in various databases. And I'm only one person. So, of course, multiply that by a million and you have large amounts of data. The question is, how can we leverage this? How can we tap into complex urban systems and bring them to a human scale? And one means of doing that is visualizing it. Visualizations can help to make the invisible visible. Visualizations can help to reveal patterns and relationships and trends. And in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to show you a couple of visualization projects, all showing different aspects of urban mobility and showcasing you different designs for the public. So the very first one is touching transport, where we are visualizing the bus network. And this was part of the larger research initiative Life Singapore by the MIT Sensible City Lab. The aim of this project is to give access to the public and to different stakeholders on real-time data about their city. So in the process of bringing together different stakeholders, we created various visualizations, for example here, how the weather affects taxi usage in Singapore. But today, I'm going to talk about the bus network, which is an integral part of the um, public transport system here. So you have to tap in and tap out uh, also in buses. So that's meaning we know from where to where the people are riding, how many passengers are on a bus at any time, and so forth. So in the design process of creating a visualization, in the beginning, we typically start with very simple graphs. Here, we are just showing boarding and deboarding passengers on a single bus line all over the day, or we are showing bus rides between the stations. And these kind of experiments, these kind of visual early prototypes help us not only to understand the data ourselves, but also to then go to the experts, in this case from the Land Transport Authority in Singapore, and discuss with them so they also can understand what and how visualizations may help. So as I said, this was aimed for the public, so we put this on a large tabletop. We created also appealing visualizations. And here we started with a map view, so people are accustomed to that, they know how to navigate on those. And you see here the blue dots uh, representing stations and more boarding passengers, and the orange ones more deboarding ones. So we also see now again one of the first prototypes, one of the first experiments here in a highly polished way, and the same with the arcs. Now let me guide you through the video. This was based, um, again, on a large multi-touch tabletop, and you can just use simple finger gestures. You can pinch and pan, like you know from your smartphone nowadays. And you can pan into the areas of interest, for example, your own neighborhood, or maybe the commuting area you are going to. So now some small first spatial patterns emerge. For example, this cluster of green areas here, indicating, if it's in the morning, indicating a dwelling area. And the orange one here, meaning apparently the area where the people are going to in the morning, meaning this is the city center or some working environment, some offices. And you can also pan through the time, pan through the day, and just select areas in the time you are interested in. But you have to keep that in mind. So a second view, and we wanted to simplify those and separate them, now you see the whole day at a single glance, and you still can compare now and start to see some tempo-spatial patterns. For example, you can see when in the evening there are many orange dots in a cluster of stations. That probably is because there is an entertainment area where people are going to for a drink in the evening. 
Now, we did a couple of user studies. I'm a researcher, so we have to do these things. And we tried them, we tested this with the experts and with the citizens of Singapore, with the public, and also with non-locals as some kind of control group. And what we learned here from this user study is that all these different stakeholders, that all participants from these different groups were able to gain some insights, were able to gain some knowledge. And of course, the depth of these insights differed. I mean, an expert obviously could connect that to prior knowledge, prior expert knowledge. But even simple things becoming in, uh, very important if it's personal to your own life. And this notion we also followed with the next project, Isoscope. Uh, this is a project done by some of my excellent students from the University of Applied Sciences in Potsdam. And there we tried to visualize the variance of mobility in a city. And this was based on a historical technique to visualize time travel, or how far you can go in a specific um, travel time. So this is Melbourne in the 1920s, and the dark purple area in the city center, you see now the area you're able to reach within 10 minutes. The dark green one is then in 20 minutes and so forth. But this only shows a single speed, or, so meaning the speed must be constant all over the day, which is for trains typically true. Now, this is of course not true for road traffic, cars, as I said, as I was sitting yesterday in the cab. So of course you're able to go further in the morning hours, but not that far in the rush hour when there's lots and lots of congestion. So we now use this technique of isochrone maps, but instead of showing different travel times, we show the same travel time now over the day. And you see this now, this is an online tool, you can also visit that and explore your own city. If we are panning over the timeline, over the day, you see how it shrinks in the day and how it enlarges and expands at night. You can also select different travel times. You can also compare, for example, working days, the weekdays, and the weekend, and so on. So this is based on sensor data from Nokia here. So we see here um, a, a agglomeration of data from cars and from sensors in the road, and so on. But the nice thing is that we published this uh, on the web, and then it was kind of uh, nicely uh, received in the media. So we got tens of thousands of users in the first days, and they, of course, gave us feedback. So what we learned is that people like to also compare cities. They start to see some of the very transient structure or very um, temporary um, patterns which emerge. And this is still kind of based on a classic map. But in the next project, we wanted to investigate how, um, well, first of all, how maps always represent the physical world. That is what we know. So, um, but there are ways of showing or of distorting the space depending on the purpose of a map. And this very famous tube map here from Harry Beck in the 1930s, he tried to solve the problem that the London tube or London underground system got larger and larger and became more complex, also visually on the geographical map. So he um, straightened the lines he equalized the distances between stops in order to ease the task of getting from station A to station B. And the question now is, do we understand that the areas here are shown differently? Do we realize there's some kind of fish eye lens over the city center? And does that maybe even affect how we perceive our city? So to investigate these kind of questions, we created this visualization here for Shanghai Metro. And there you see the uh, metro network plan as it looks like in the tube station and the underground stations in, in Shanghai. And this was exhibited there, so it was for the local citizens. And we created a couple of different visualization scenes, also an infographic poster showing some details. But this data here is based on the time plan, so on the actual time schedule. Meaning this is how it would look like in the perfect world, or how I imagine the perfect world in, a, in the mind of a transport planner. So in the morning now, they're all starting, all these little dots here are trains starting running on their lines and we are following a single train. And now if we are zooming in a bit, then we suddenly see that the stops are all flashing, that they're all popping up. And this is always the time when a train arrives at a station, there's some activity. It's of course a simplification. But what you can see now is that they are all flashing in unison, synchronously, again, based on the time plan. So, what it kind of does, it, is, it gives an impression of the pulse of the city, of the rhythm of the city. And we put that also in contrast, this rigidness, 
with this very vibrant, colorful, uh, human scale uh, visual style. But let's go back to the geographical view. So you see the Dudong River, you see the shoreline of, of Shanghai. And now let's say we want to actually see how it looks like in the schematic view. So we transform that, we morph that to the schematic view. And if you now observe the green line uh, in the right bottom corner, which goes to the airport, you see how this shrinks and now expands again. And this, in the geographical view, for me as a rider of a train, of a subway, of an underground subway uh, train, it is not that important that I know it's three or five kilometers. It's much more important that I know I have to get off the train in two stops. So this notion of um, that precise geographical maps might not always be the most appropriate to reflect how we, how we perceive space or how we move around on a personal level in a city. We also investigated in this project, Liquidator, also by some of my great students here. And here we wanted to allow users, allow, allow citizens to playfully explore their personal paths. So this was based on the famous psychogeographic map by De Boer, and where he tried to find another way or a new way of displaying, of highlighting spaces and places where we, to which we are, to which we have some personal relation, to which we are maybe emotionally connected. This might be the bench in the park where we had our first kiss, or it might be the bakery with this nice smell in the morning. And so our project was influenced not only conceptually, but also visually, where we try to come up with a new way, with a novel way of visualizing or highlighting these spaces which are relevant to our own life. Now, let's see also, again, a visualization experiment. As I said in the design process, it is important to try out a visual language, to find a visual form. And this very organic way here, this very fuzzy and, and fluid metaphor of the mental map, which we all might have if we're in a new city, with also, which is also very imprecise, they, we try to here reflect this also in the style. But again, just an experiment, so now let me again guide you through the next video where we are showing this prototype. Now, let's assume you went to Berlin and it is a new city for you, either for work or for leisure. But let's say now you have a couple of hours and you just stroll around, you just walk around and want to experience the city. And you don't actually want to just look on your little device through this looking glass and find maybe the best cafe in the vicinity. You're just more interested to actually experience the city. But now let's assume in the evening you go back to your hotel and in the lobby there's this large tabletop a public display and you put your mobile phone now onto this table and at that moment you are sharing your personal paths, you are opening up all these spaces so it flows onto the map and, and covers the spaces you visited. And now these little yellow dots here are points of interest. That might be a cafe you visited, that might be a gallery around the corner you didn't pass by. And now you can also use your personal device with, a pri uh, um, with the public device. And I think this is also a nice metaphor for the personal and the, the public space when we walk around. So with a private device where you also know how to handle it, you can now select one of the points of interest, one of these little yellow dots here. And if you found something which is interesting, maybe which you've visited, so you want to know a bit more about it and what others have thought about it. So now you select it and you can dig into some comments maybe others made or some reviews some others published on the web. So you just tap on it and select through these other ideas or comments people made. You can do the same for pictures, maybe people shared or uploaded to the web. And if you have been to the cafe and you liked it, the nice maybe facade or the wallpaper or something, and you had a picture taken yourself, then you can just share it and swipe it and put it to the public space, to the public table. So in that sense, you are also sharing your own experience. This also happens now when another person comes into the lobby, let's say, has the same app, of course, installed, and puts his or her phone onto the table, and now you see overlappings. Now you can also see um, how maybe you visited similar areas, or maybe where you did not do that, and where you recommend others. 
or where you discuss about your experience here. So all these four projects I showed you briefly are visualizing different aspects of urban mobility. We've seen bus passengers and bus rides. We have seen car traffic here and the congestion. We have seen subway trains and the distortion of space on subway maps. And we've seen traces of our personal passes of pedestrians walking around in a city. But all of them have in common that we try to incite curiosity, that we want to enable an, a casual exploration, and that, they, that we want to support generating insights. So overall, really, we want to encourage people to reflect on how each of us individually and we all as a whole move around in cities. Thank you.